Hello there and welcome. Have you ever been in a situation where you're going through the process of creating a new page and you need to set some key requirements? Like, how long should the text be? How is the content structured on competing websites? And should you do the same? Is it okay if it takes a bit longer for your page to load up? What keywords should you use and where should they be placed on the page? Or perhaps you're in a different situation where you're just considering a new niche and you'd like to know what competitors you'll be going up against in search. How do the top ranking pages look? And exactly which parameters allow them to rank high? Well, to help you deal with these specific tasks, we've developed a tool called SERP Analyzer. What the tool does is it analyzes the content, backlinks, and technical parameters of the top search results on the specified keyword SERPs. Then, it provides a report with a detailed breakdown of each page along with a list of recommendations. And I want to point out that these recommendations are based on the actual metrics of the top ranking search results. Before we start dissecting the tool, be sure to follow the link in the description to sign up to SEO Ranking and try out the SERP analyzer yourself. Now, let's take a closer look at how the tool works. To start off, SERP Analyzer can be accessed from the Tools section in the top navigation bar. You can find it in the list right under the on-page SEO checker. Once you're in the tool, launch a SERP analysis by clicking on the New Audit button. The initial page here is actually incredibly simple. You only have to keep three settings in mind. Which search engine you want to scan, which keyword SERPs you want to analyze, and what the exact scanning rules are. First, you have to either select Google or Google Mobile as the search engine, then choose a country and set the location. Now, I want to point out that setting the location is incredibly important if you're researching a niche for a local or regional business and you need to keep the results relevant to your specific geographical area. Next, you have the option to pick what range of search results the tool should analyze. You are free to analyze the top 3, top 5, top 10, top 20, top 30, and top 50 search results. It is up to you to decide which range to go for because the best option depends on the kind of tasks you're dealing with. If you want to see what it would take to rank your page among the top 3 or the top 10 search results, plus you need to benchmark the competition, you'd better off picking the corresponding range. On the other hand, if you're just trying to get a grasp of a niche and you need to see the bigger picture, getting a report on the top 50 search results is the way to go. Next, you'll have to type in the keywords whose SERP players you want to check. You can enter either one or several keywords at once if you need to analyze several related terms at the same time. Finally, we have scanning rules that allow you to further tailor the report to your needs. For instance, if you run a small online store and don't need to see big players like Amazon or Best Buy in your report, you can add an exclude rule for them to make sure that your report focuses on smaller, down-to-earth websites like your own. You can also add an include rule to make sure that a certain page is scanned even if it doesn't appear among the search results in the analyzed region. This feature can be extremely useful in situations when you're already aware of several existing competitors and want to find out if they could pose any serious competition in Google search as well. All right, now once you launch an analysis, the tool starts checking each page in the selected range of search results to see how well they are optimized for the target keywords you've entered. The SERP analyzer also evaluates the technical performance of those pages, such as page experience, meta tag usage, and so on. By the way, we've developed our list of metrics based on potential ranking factors, so the tool checks most of the key parameters that Google may be taking into account. As soon as SERP analyzer finishes scanning, you'll get a report consisting of three parts, SERP report, competitive comparison, and SEO tasks. 
The first part, SERP report, presents a quick overview of the pages that were just scanned. The curved line graph provides a comparison of how every competitor performs in terms of the analyzed metrics. Plus, it can be helpful if you're looking for correlations. You can always customize the list of metrics on the graph by clicking on the Add Metrics button in the top right corner. For instance, if you're trying to figure out whether high keyword density necessarily translates into higher page rankings, you can add the metric to the graph to see if there's any direct connection. By default, we display each competitor separately. But if you'd like to focus on the general trends of the analyzed websites, it's possible to group them into larger clusters by clicking on the Grouping By button. That way, you'll see the metrics of the analyzed pages broken down into groups of either 5 or 10. Under the graph, you can find a list of every scanned page along with key data. Next to each competitor, you'll find their on-page score. This score evaluates page quality based on keywords, marketing parameters, and technical metrics adjusted to the average value of the selected range of top search results. The score ranges from 0 to 100 and depends on the number of issues found on the analyzed page as well as the weight of each issue. High quality keyword optimized pages, which meet most requirements, will have a score closer to 100, while the score of pages that are poorly optimized for their target keywords is going to be closer to zero. By studying this score, you can identify pages that follow best practices and that were carefully optimized from the standpoint of on-page SEO. Basically, we scan every page in the selected range and then evaluate how it performs in terms of on-page SEO to give you a clear understanding of what to aim for and how to do on-page SEO on your own future page. As for the other metrics that you can add to the graph, you can see them directly under each page, such as traffic forecast, which is calculated based on the site's position and the search volume of the analyzed keywords, or the number of backlinks pointing to the page to name a few. But if you want to take a detailed look at every metric that was checked for each page, including the size of various tags, overall content volume, and technical metrics pertaining to page experience, click on the button with three horizontal dots. Now we also have another three dotted button over here with vertical dots. It gives you two options. You can either get an overview of a page's content that includes its title, description, and structure of page headings, which you can use as inspiration for writing your own content. Or you can click on Create a Detailed Report to get an on-page SEO checker report for the selected page. Going back to the initial report page, it's possible to customize the list of analyzed websites by toggling them on or off under the Active column. For instance, you might want to remove some competitors from the comparison if their site is currently inactive or if it's not relevant to your niche. You may also notice that the scores will be recalculated whenever a website is switched on or off. This happens because the score depends on the active SERP competitors. On top of that, some sites can automatically be inactive if they use a firewall that prevents our bot from scanning them. Next, we have the competitive comparison section that allows you to analyze important on-page parameters of the top ranking pages, such as terms and related metrics, technical on-page metrics, and content parameters like title, description, and headings. The Terms tab lists keywords detected across all competing websites. You can also filter out keywords used in the main or supplementary content keywords used in heading tags, title, description, keywords in bold, and so on. The area column in the report lets you know if a specific keyword shows up in the main or supplementary content of the page to make it easier for you to determine whether a keyword is immediately related to the purpose of the page and whether it should be used in your content too. The usage column next to it shows the parts of the page 
where a certain keyword shows up, for example, its URL, title, headers, and so on. Finally, we also present metrics like TFIDF for determining the general relation of a keyword to a page's content, and count or density metrics for evaluating how often it is used in the contents of the page. Under the On-Page Metrics tab, you can get a side-by-side -side competitive comparison of the SEO and content parameters of any analyzed page. The comparison table includes data on such parameters as the title tag and description length and pixel length, number of characters and words on the page and in the main content, domain data, off-page SEO data, and page user experience parameters. Analyze this data to understand what your page's content and technical setup should ideally look like. And the last tab here, content displays more specific content-related parameters, including titles, descriptions, and structure of headings. But instead of just seeing the length of these page elements, you can see the exact text that is used to get a grasp of how to phrase your own content. By the way, you can add competitors to the comparison table for each of these three tabs by clicking on the Add Competitors button. To sum up, the competitive comparison section basically allows you to analyze and compare various content and technical characteristics of several competitors side by side. Finally, the third part of the report is called SEO tasks. It is one of the most fundamental sections when it comes to planning your future page. Here, you get a list of specific tasks for building your own page which are all graded by priority. By default, the list is based on the check parameters and on the data we got from the pages ranking in the SERPs. That way, these tasks reflect the real situation in the SERPs for your niche, instead of just providing you with a bunch of identical recommendations and best practices for each site. So, if for example we notice that most of the competitors have an above average keyword density, we'll adjust the recommended range to reflect that most sites in the analyzed SERPs use the target keyword more frequently than usual. Additionally, you can create your own tasks, adjust their priority, or remove them from the list altogether. This saves a lot of time and can be invaluable for drafting new pages since you have the freedom to set up task lists for your content and technical teams to go through. That way, you can be sure that you're creating pages that can outrank the competition for your target keywords and rest assured knowing that you won't have to spend time optimizing anything anytime soon. And that's it. Today, we learned how to use the SERP Analyzer tool to check up on potential competition in the search results. And I really hope that the information provided by the tool will help you plan out your future activities and determine the best avenues for further growth. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video and want to be notified whenever we drop new content. See you next time.